Hi, today I will talk about snapshot testing on iOS apps and what they are about and what it's useful for. Also, how to tackle uh, running a snapshot test on Xcode Cloud because it's not really uh, easy by default. What I mean with a view is that any Swift UI view or UIKit view or view controller. Then state would mean loading state or different data cases, uh, as well error or partial error states. Then config would be which device the application is running on, on which OS version, and locale, configuration, region, dynamic type, and interface style. The combination of all these factors is what decides uh, how their pixels are rendered on the screen. The problem though is that there are too many combinations to test. Uh, for example, given the view and state and configuration options, we can have like a single case of like a Swift UI view in a loading state in an iPhone 13 mini in, in this whole context. That's one combination. Then we can have the same view in when in a different data state and in an iPad in iOS 17. That's a second combination, but quickly the combination count goes out of control. So we cannot test all those combinations. The app that I will be testing is like a small application that is a movie catalog app that I made, which I'm going to be particularly testing like a detailed screen. And I want to take a snapshot of it and to see with different configuration, different data. For that screen that we saw, I can test like the, the screen on iPhone in light mode with the assert snapshot method. Now in this case, I'm passing a container, which is just like a a convenience method that creates like the view, the movie details view that I want to test and wraps it on a navigation stack and potentially set the environment local if passed. Then I can run the test. The first time it should fail because the snapshot reference is not found. That's the case. Then I will run the test again and it should pass. Then uh, I will do the same for the other cases. All these tests are testing the same screen in different configurations. This test tests the screen in on an iPhone with dark mode in Spanish. This one tests the iPhone in light mode with dynamic type enabled, in this case accessibility extra extra large. And this one tests iPad in light mode in the region. This tests the screen with a fixed size in order to see the full content of the scrollable view. And then the snapshots are the references are recorded like this. So the files have the right name and they we can see like a how the same view behaves in different scenarios. Then I can try to break a test by doing a visual change, let's say removing the title, you can run the tests. And they fail. If I look at the test, it says like the snapshot does not match the reference and gives me a command. I can paste that on the console and opens my uh, diff app, in this case Kaleidoscope, uh, and then we can see that it's basically the title is missing. So we can fix the test by just restoring the, the title. I can run it again and it should pass. Perfect. Now to configure the test to run in Xcode Cloud, I can go to the cloud, create like a workflow. Important things is that I'm using the latest release of Xcode and the latest release of macOS, similar to my development setup. Then whenever a pull request is created, I will run the test. 
and I make sure that I use the iPhone 15 Pro the same way as I've been running the test on the iPhone 15 Pro on my machine and with the iOS 17.4, which is the same case as my machine. Once I save that, then if I create a pull request, Now this pull request created, it will trigger Xcode Cloud build. Now I see that the build failed with 11 errors. Looking at the test, it says that the reference was not found on disk. Wait, as we saw, the snapshots were indeed present. So what's the problem? In the last WWDC, Janus asked a question about how to deal with the snapshot artifacts on CI. They replied about adding them to the test bundle. Then he explained how the resources in the test bundle are available to the test in CI in Xcode Cloud. Janus uh, explained that on his website with this article, uh, where I will link down below. To solve running a snapshot test on CI, we need to move from a file hierarchy like in the left towards a file hierarchy like in the right. And the main point is that instead of having multiple snapshot tests that they are next to the test that define them, uh, is that we use a single snapshot uh, folder. It's important to use a single one because otherwise uh, when adding that to Xcode to the test bundle, it will complain about it. That's problem is explained in the Janus article. To solve this, we go to the source of a certain snapshot. And then we don't have like a directory as a parameter in this signature. But then internally, the code calls this verify snapshot method. And verify snapshot does allow for a snapshot directory to be passed. Even more, the implementation of uh, a certain snapshot is quite simple. So we can create our own version of this method that actually accepts the snapshot directory as a parameter. So for that, I created this extension where I call like this custom assert snapshot. And here I use this namespace to create like a new snapshot directory that will be at this level. Then I do the same steps as the original code of the certain snapshot test. Of course, then I have to change the calls of a certain snapshot to my custom method. And then I run the test. And those fails. And the reason for that is that the snapshot directory is different. So no reference were found on disk again. So I will just like re-record the snapshots. And that's it. The next step is to have the snapshots be part of the bundle. You can find the product in Finder, show package contents, plugins, and the testing target. I can show the package contents, and we don't find the snapshots anywhere here. To achieve that, I can go to Finder, get this new snapshot directory drag it to Xcode at the top level and create a folder reference. With that in place, I can run the test and should work. And more importantly, when I open the, the bundle, I can go to plugins and test and I can find the snapshots in here. Now test still will not work on Xcode Cloud. And the reason for that is that we're still not using the bundle directory where the snapshots are stored on CI. So in order to be able to run this on test correctly, we need an another change. And that looks like this. First, we add a computer variable to check if we are running on CI or not. First, we use that variable to see if we're running on CI. If so, we use like a test bundle URL. Otherwise, we use the source code directory. 
the this bundle URL we can uh, compute like this. Um, basically, what's gonna happen is that the best directory will be either the test bundle, the embedded snapshots, or the source code version. Since whenever we we compile the project and the snapshots are updated, they will be embedded into the test, so we can run on CI. Now, with those changes in place, we can push to GitHub. Uh, which will trigger a new CI build. Now the snapshots should be found. After running the new build, we can see that tests are still failing. When we look at the failures, uh, this let's see the the snapshot does not match the reference. This is positive because the snapshot test is actually finding the reference, which is what we wanted. But for some reason, uh, they don't match the reference. A way to see the failure will be to click on the test. And then you can see the attachment failures. And I think here the best thing is to use preview. What's the difference? Uh, well, it's nothing perceptible. Let's see another test. The reference. Failure. The actual difference. Doesn't seem clear what is failing. Now, the, this out of the scope of this video, but the solution is about the understanding the precision and perceptual precision parameters. And those are discussed in the snapshot testing library. Uh, but as a simple explanation, uh, we can make a custom image snapshotting type uh, that it will put the precision and perce perceptual precision as a 098. Uh, sometimes when making snapshots on an Apple Silicon uh, chip and then uh, making the same snapshots on an Intel machine, which is the case of Xcode Cloud, there might be some imperceptible differences. And this uh, will help mitigate a bit of the variance that can happen. Um, so basically creating the, the custom image will allow us to set up these parameters where we use image. So for example, in here, um, we can go back to the test instead of the same image, we say custom image. Or we can do that for all the other tests. So I will commit this. Now we wait to see the results on the next build. Then when the build is finished, we now know that the test pass on Xcode Cloud. Finally, as a summary of how to run snapshot tests on Xcode Cloud, we need to make sure that we adapt the directory structure to snapshots. We pass that new directory as a parameter in verify snapshot, then add the new directory as part of the test bundle. Then basically alternate between the source code directory and the test bundle directory to reference the snapshots. Finally, we replace the suggest of assert snapshot with our custom method that implements this logic. Also, I'm planning a video on how to make views easier to test. If you're interested in that video, just let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until the next one.